There's growing concern among some South Africans about the recently published side effects of the COVID-19 Pfizer vaccine. The documents in question stem from Pfizer's clinical trials that were submitted to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. The report spoke of over 150,000 adverse events. Let's set the record straight. We're joined now by Professor of Vaccinology at Wits University, Shabir Mahdi. Prof, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. So a 55,000-page set of documents revealing that the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine has 1,291 side effects. Is there anything to be concerned about? Oh, good evening. Thank you for having me. So I think we just need to unpack two issues. The one issue is the reporting from clinical trials. And the other issue is the ongoing reporting, which, many, which pharmaceutical companies are obliged to do as part of post-marketing uh, surveillance or post-introduction surveillance. And what you're referring to, in fact, is a combination of the two rather than just uh, data from the clinical trials. Uh, the data from the clinical trials have largely been published. Uh, and yes, there are side effects to vaccines, but the majority of those side effects are mild and self-limiting. Uh, the problem with clinical trials is because even if you only enroll 40,000 individuals into a clinical trial, which itself is a large clinical trial, uh, that sort of study would be insufficiently powered. It wouldn't in include enough people to be able to identify extremely rare conditions that might be associated with a vaccine. So something as an example that occurs in one out of every 100,000 people that are vaccinated, unfortunately, the clinical trials won't be able to identify that. And those are the type of signals that you would only be able to identify after vaccine is being deployed more widely. So currently in the United States, there's over 150 million doses of Pfizer vaccine that's been deployed. Uh, and yes, there have been side effects, but again, the majority of the side effects are mild. But there are some side effects that would be serious. Uh, and those side effects need to be interrogated in more detail. The best estimate currently is that uh, the, in terms of fatal side effects, people dying from COVID-19 vaccine, that's probably in a region of one to two per million doses of vaccine, which is not too dissimilar to many other vaccines that we also use. The chances of dry, dying of a lightning strike in South Africa is in a region of about four in a million. So it's also about context uh, and it's about the risk benefit uh, profile eventually. Thank you for putting that into context for us. I think it's very important. So the one question that many people will be asking right now, because some of us are going for booster shots and others are also probably going for their first or second shot of the Pfizer jab is, do you still go for Pfizer over Johnson & Johnson? Which one has less side effects? Well, they've got a different profile of side effects. So as an example, the deep venous thrombosis, which is more of a character feature, of the non-replicating vector-based vaccines, the Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca vaccine, that's a less common side effect uh, with a Pfizer vaccine. On the other end, uh, when you look at inflammation of the heart muscle, especially in young men, uh, there's more of a side effect of the Pfizer vaccine. So there are differences between the vaccines. But uh, if I had a choice, uh, and I do actually have the choice, uh, having received two doses of the Pfizer vaccine, certainly for my third dose of vaccine, I would go for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And the reason for that is not because of the safety profile of the Pfizer vaccine, but rather because we know from the scientific data that this combination of different uh, vaccines uh, probably performs better than using the same vaccine over and over again. So that heterologous approach uh, certainly confers advantage in terms of the magnitude of protection against uh, mild COVID included. Uh, Prof, let's talk about long-term side effects, the possibility of that happening. Of course, we know that millions of people have been vaccinated around the world. And we can look at side effects about what's happening right now to those people, if they have any. But in terms of the long-term side effects, is there anything that people should be watching out for and which we might discover in a couple of years, not right now? Yeah, and uh, the short answer to that is that it's an unknown, but at the same time, we can be informed with the use of other vaccines that have been around for decades. And the history of vaccine safety is most of the side effects usually manifest within a period of two to three weeks, and extremely rarely after three months. There's no vaccine that I know of that where the side effects only start manifesting months and years after its use. So I'm less concerned about the long-term side effects of vaccines because many of these vaccines, remember, they actually eliminated from the body uh, because they degraded, they processed, and eventually they removed from the body. So it's the immune response that is in being induced, which often results in this sort of different side effects. 
And again, those usually manifest within a period of, uh, in fact, a few days usually for the milder side effects and up to two, two, three weeks for some of the more serious side effects. I'm looking at uh, social media right now and I'm seeing for a third day in a row that Pfizer is still trending in South Africa, which means that this discussion about the latest announcement regarding the side effects has people talking. Anybody who has any fear about going to take this Pfizer jab, what would you say to them? to actually make sure that they have some sort of comfort going to get it and also make sure that they are not deterred from getting their second jab or their booster shot. Well, I, like the first issue is that we really need to be careful how we interpret the data that has been released by the FDA. And if you take it at its uh, face value without being critical in your thought, then you would come to wrong conclusions, which is pretty much what has been peddled in social media. Uh, at the end of the day, we need to make a choice. Uh, are you wanting to be protected against COVID-19 or are you wanting to remain unprotected? Yes, natural infection-induced immunity, which has evolved in a large percentage of the South African population, does protect against severe disease. But again, the science has clearly demonstrated that a combination of the two, vaccination plus infection, in fact, confers the best immunity and not only protects against severe disease, but also results in protection against mild COVID and infection. So one something that has not taken traction on social media, as an example, is another study that was released yesterday, uh, which shows what is the long-term consequences on the brain of people that have even developed mild infection due to COVID, where there's actually literally a shrinkage of the size of the brain between 0.2 to 2%, as well as loss of gray matter. So these are long-term side effects of COVID-19, and it's clearly obviously getting much less attention on social media uh, than what has essentially been a data dump on the part of the FDA in response to a court order to release the data. You know, when you mentioned that, though, yeah. Sally and I are both here, we're like, what? So you're still saying there's nothing to worry about then? Well, as, like I said, there certainly is side effects. Um, the majority of the side effects are mild. Uh, there are some serious side effects, but the chances of dying, of, have a, of having a fatal side effect from the Pfizer vaccine probably is in the region of around about one to two per million doses of vaccine. Uh, in South Africa, we've had close on to probably 25 million doses of vaccine that have been administered. Uh, right now, there haven't been any confirmed deaths due to uh, having been vaccinated with a Pfizer vaccine. All right, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Professor of Vaccinology at Wits University, Shabi Mahdi. Did he just say that... They're looking at the long-term impact of having had COVID-19 and it could actually shrink the brain. Yeah, shrinkage. So that is... So in other words, we think... Uh, we, we tend to get fixated on the consequences of the side effects of the vaccine, but there are long-term yeah. potential consequences of getting uh, COVID-19 itself. So, and, and you know, he's always, um, always enjoyed listening to Professor Mahdi because he's straight down the line. He, he's not trying to yeah. present a story. And, and for me, Shahan, it boils down to who am I going to trust? Yeah. Am I going to trust um, a variety of people on Facebook and I'm not sure of their credentials who have a view? Or am I going to trust scientists that I personally have worked with in other programs, people that we know um, have got the credentials because I'm not an expert, but I think I'm going to trust experts like Professor Shabi Amadi. Definitely, I'll trust an expert. That's just us. <laughs>